now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is a ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go down to Florida. Unless. Where, where that woman is having a wonderful time. Are you enjoying Florida? I, you know, I am, but man, I take a lot of heat. Like I went to, when I went to California recently, um, I take a lot of heat from people that are very politicized. Mm -hmm. going, How can you live in Florida? It's like, well, the weather's nice. Our neighbors are fabulous. We live in a relatively small town near a big town. So we have the cultural attributes of the big town mm -hmm. and then the convenience of the small town. And, uh, you know, I don't discuss politics with friends very much. Occasionally, you, you don't want to discuss politics down there with those right wingers. It, no, it's just Although, quite. Although, didn't they have a vote last night that was kind of pro yeah, Democrat? But I, I went to my. Democrats did well overall yeah. in, in yesterday's voting. Wonderful. I went our polling place, though, and they, they changed it, they moved it. And didn't didn't tell me, <laughs> but it's um, yeah. Sometimes it'll move on you. Oh, by the way, by the way, for people who are watching us, this was recorded a couple of weeks ago. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, but the Democrats over overall did quite well, and abortion was the tipping point mm -hmm. for a lot of a lot of voters because you know they're not really red in their politics, um, but and, not really blue in their politics, but they want abortion to be at least accessible because right. it goes back to my favorite bumper sticker ever about abortion if you don't believe in abortion don't have one <laughs> i uh, thought that was yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. it was such a soft hammer but it was such a truth well i just uh you know i mean i think maybe the fact that uh, see the the majority of americans believe in people's rights to abortion yeah so when this thing happened in the Supreme Court, this made it tougher for the for the for anybody who stood up being against abortion. Mm -hmm. And so all these guys, like the governor of uh, where was it, Virginia, I think it was, didn't get reelected. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just based on the fact that he he was pro life. You know. Yeah, I mean, it was a very, it was very much a, a fulcrum in the voting yesterday. Yeah. And. Yeah, and then, you know, the, the irony is the cities where it's legal, or the cities, rather the states, you know, are celebrating and, and increasing the tourist tax um, because people come over from the states where it's illegal right, right. and get stuff done. Kind of like women from women who live in Virginia come to Florida for plastic surgery. Well, I think we could see this happening a lot. Oh, you yeah. Know, th this, is, this is a good trend. This is nice to see, you know. But I don't yeah. know how it's going to help Biden. That's the only problem. I, he just seems so lackluster. Not that that's a leadership quality, but it's kind of nice to have. The only leadership <laughs> quality. The only leadership quality is how he does business for us. You yeah, know. that's exactly and right. And if he gets it done, that that's all we need to know. But my my argument here about Biden, and who knows by now he may have decided not to run. Um, yeah. Because a age, lot, of, a lot of Democrats are saying, "Come on, please," you know. Yeah, give us you, something to work with. You're not doing right by us, mm -hmm. you know. You're being yeah. selfish, and you're, you know, you're being egotistical by wanting to run again. Just don't run again. Let somebody, you know, who was it? Um, um, it was Bill Maher who said he was talking to the raging Cajun. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. The, the mouth from the south, you know, the, you know the guy I'm talking about, Mary to Mary Madeline, uh, oh, James yeah, Carville, you know, James Carville, yeah. uh, James Carville, and Carville said, you know, the fact of the matter is, if the Democratic Party ran anybody who was in his fifties, he beat out Trump in a heartbeat. I think you're right. It doesn't matter who he is. 
Yeah, because the age issue is becoming a Biden albatross. Well, right now it's an age issue because Trump is younger. But if you go get a guy in his 50s or maybe early 60s, game over. Yeah. You know? Uh, uh -huh. And especially if you get a guy like Gavin Newsom, for instance, who I, to me would be the perfect candidate. Yes. Uh, because I he, he has, you know, in debates and stuff, he would just, you know, he'd make mincemeat out of Trump. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he has a lot of charisma, the, governor of California. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, this would, uh, he would win. He, it, uh -huh. No question he would win. Yeah, I wonder if they will. They're probably begging Biden not to run. I would say the Democratic Party. And maybe they'll draft Newsom because he'd be, I'd vote for him in a heartbeat. Uh, I, I, I think most people would. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they would hear this guy, they would hear what he had to say. Yes, there are negatives. He has negatives, right? We all do. His record yeah. in California, there are little blips in the record, you know, but there mm -hmm. aren't anybody's. I mean, what happens, you, you get a guy who was a governor somewhere, and mm -hmm. there are blips in their record. Oh, they're, yeah, they're yeah. dealing with, uh, you know, different opinions, and some are louder than others. Well, it isn't and, so much that they have a they have a voting record. They have a maybe they didn't do as well doing this as governor, but they were. But then you can point he was did this. You know, I mean, uh, um, I think the perfect people to run for president and the people who make the best presidents are governors. Yeah. You know, because they've already done it but we, on a smaller well, scale. Well, well, well yeah, on a, in a microcosm, they've run a country. You know. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so they know how to deal with budgets and things like that. All the I mean, expecting stuff. a senator to be a good president is is a is a fever dream. You know. <laughs> well, and uh, Huckabee, Sarah Huckabee, announced she's going to endorse. She endorsed Trump, and she kind of been on the fence. So that's Huckabee. That's uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, know. I wonder if she'd just have a lot of resentment against him. Although I, I interviewed her father. Yeah. Who I expected when he walked in the door I would hate. I walked out liking yeah. the guy. He walked out, yeah, yeah, because there's a certain... Uh, the Southerners, I think, have a lot of... I don't want to say genuineness, but they're very people focused. Like when they sit down with you at a table, yeah, they're yeah. listening to your conversation. Well, it, uh, it, he didn't, you know, I mean, he didn't win me over to his politics, mm, mind yeah. you. But I liked him. I said, he, it said to him, you're really a nice guy. Why don't you act this way more in the stuff you vote <laughs> for and do and so on and so forth. Um, but he was, uh, he was a good guy, you know. I mean, I, I, and I'm not, I, I'm not talking about his politics. Right. Okay, so please don't try to uh, try to uh, get me. Uh, oh, there's a spam risk trying to call me. Uh, yeah. it, it, you know, but I really, I really, I, I, I liked him a lot. You know, I, and we had a we had somebody else that was a Republican who got into a lot of trouble that we liked quite a bit too. And I'm talking about just being somebody you like talking to, like sitting <laughs> down talking to. You may disagree with them, but you like talking to them, and they're reasonable in listening to what you have to say. And he was quite reasonable, you know. Yeah, you gotta like that—the common senseness yeah. of it. Yeah, and I'm surprised that no upcoming—it could be either party, but Democrats are who I was thinking of—has um, attached themselves to an up-and-coming, a few up-and-coming bands, mm -hmm. because the endorsement of a rocker if, if for the 18 to 24 group. Would have would carry some weight, you know. You got to approach on that on the level of interest, and I think that would be. I'm surprised that no one's done that, because. Well, now here, here, let's go to a subject that we haven't talked about. God, I think since the radio show. What? Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. I love Tammy Faye. Love her. <laughs> I, I I love them both, I, and mm -hmm. people go. How can you look at what they did? Robbing money from people? They no, they didn't do any of that. There, many the people who work for them were stealing the money, mm -hmm. and they were yeah. watching over it too well. Because what That's would happen? This was a church uh, thing, okay? People Minister. would people would yeah. send people would send cash, right, with no conditions on it right. at all, and they had and they had these money rooms. 
where there were guys going in there and just, you know, sticking it in their pockets. I'm going to Subway. <laughs> What's the yeah, yeah, I'm buying very expensive sandwiches. You know, I mean, it was really amazing. Just amazing. Yep. Well, and I think that it was just so slack and oversight of any kind down there. Because my mom was one of those victory warriors for, I think mm -hmm. it was $1,000 at the time. You got basically mm -hmm. a timeshare, but mm -hmm. it was unsecured. There were no guarantees. And that's what I told her. I said, Mom, they're exploiting your faith to get to buy to get you to buy an unregulated and unsecured timeshare and it has no guarantees that it's going to be active and viable in two years or especially not in 10 you know because it's, there was just not enough well, oversight but here was what they did and and people say well they were crooks they were stealing from the, their minions their people who believed in them no they weren't they said they were going to build a amusement park for Christians Six Flags Over Jesus. Basically. Yeah. And they did it. Mm-hmm. They weren't lying to anybody. They built the damn thing. Yeah. And it had waters, slides, and it had, uh, you know, roller coasters and... Everything you want in a Christian-based... Everything you'd want in an amusement park with a Christian twist. And, and in a Christian atmosphere. Yes. Of wholesomeness and so on and so forth. You, your children won't be seduced by the uh, the devil like they are yeah. in other theme parks you know they are yeah they aren't serving but, but whiskey it, the but they said send us your money we'll build this thing they sent the money they built the thing exactly and my mother was not bitter when the whole thing came chumbling down because she said you know she got something out of that she loved the show and she well, i love it. that show <laughs> yeah 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 and like i've said many times Tammy Faye Baker was one of the people who openly embraced gay people when AIDS struck. Mm -hmm. I mean, she um, would hug them, and she genuinely, I think she had a genuine love for people. And I think Jim had a little more ego. He was a little more... Well, Jim's still by. around. He's still doing a show. Yeah. And he's but, very uh, right-wing. You know, what else, what other choice did he have? You right. Know? But, if, if you're a Chris, yeah. Christian minister, you have to be right-wing. Yeah. 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 And that's so much of his base. But, you know, when they were together, they put on, I think, one of the most entertaining television shows uh -huh. in my memory. I mean, I'm serious, folks. If you never watched this thing, it was, you would sit there and you would laugh, you would cry, uh, you would watch <laughs> this show with a full-sized orchestra and a giant audience and the whole thing, you know. And they they did they put on a real show, and I yeah. always appreciated that. And uh, but there were little things that we could say were in bad taste, like they had this kid. I can't remember his oh. name now. What was his name? <laughs> Wait a minute. Somebody's house. They well, built somebody's well, house. Well, this kid had no arms and no legs. Okay. Kevin. 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 <laughs> had no arms and no legs. All right. So they. And yeah, now here's Kevin, and Kevin rolls out onto the stage. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Literally rolls out. And they go, uh, so, Kevin, we're building you a house at, mm -hmm. at, uh, at uh, Heritage uh, USA. What was it called? Heritage USA, yeah. And we're building you a house. And so they built this house with Kevin and all his other <laughs> freaky friends. <laughs> It was kind of like a carnival in the and, 1900s. And they lived in this house, and you could visit it. My oh. mom went to Kevin's house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you could visit it. In fact, for Kevin, you know how, how wallpaper, bad wallpaper, has like a trim about halfway up, you know? Yeah. It goes around. Well, for Kevin, they lowered it. <laughs> Yeah, everything to scale. Everything to scale. Uh, I just, I love that show. I just loved everything about it. We used to sit there, and when they, when Kevin would come out, we just, oh my God, we, it was horrible. We shouldn't be laughing at that, but it was hilarious. Well, yeah, because if you looked at it with a satirical eye, it almost matched up to like well-driven satire. I mean, it, yeah. if you looked at it like, um, if you were stoned, for instance. And you could see oh, the way we they were doing it. Stoned a lot. <laughs> it it looked like a spoof almost yeah. already. 
So that's what it made, made it very now interesting. Now, your mother, your mother, because she, God bless her, she loved them. She'd send them money. They'd send her back stuff. And she got something that you then gave me, and I think I still have it in storage. Yes. I, was but, it the doll? The Susie Moppet doll. Yeah. But when Jim and Tammy Baker first started out, okay, uh, they started out by doing a puppet show for the, I think, for the PT. For, yeah, Pat well, Robertson. Well, they were PTL, but it was for Pat Robertson, whatever that was. Yeah. And uh, they had a puppet called Susie Moppet. <laughs> and this was the, they did a puppet show. They were they were entertainers. They didn't they they yeah. felt they felt like they could bring you to Jesus through entertainment. Might yeah. as well. Yeah. They, they failed with me, but <laughs> you know. But anyway, so it had this Susie Moppet, and your mm-hmm. mother got a Susie Moppet doll, and it has a little ring you pull. Uh huh. And she says any one of a number of phrases, and the voice is Tammy Faye Baker's. It is. Jesus loves you. And I he have re- that. Re- I have that somewhere because I know I never threw it out. You know. Oh, yeah. It was definitely iconic. I mean, it was a part of Americana that mm-hmm. was unique. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how much I could get for that, say, at um, Pawn Stars. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because she has a legacy, that, that Susie Moffat. Yeah. And when uh, we talked about this before. I think when Tammy Faye was on Larry King, mm-hmm. her last she ever did i think she died about a week later and she was so ravaged by cancer um she could barely barely speak yeah i think i remember that interview oh it was tragic it was anguishing to watch and uh, the last thing she says was jesus loves you he really really does and i love you too and for her it seemed so genuine that yes i always felt it was i didn't feel Mm -hmm. i i think jim was more of the crook because he was more of the uh, traditional, um, um, you know, huckster, a religious yeah. huckster. Yeah. Yeah. And he just built, built, built. He always had construction for it. Uh, Richard Dorch, who was one of his. Oh, but he, and, he's the guy who really got them in trouble. Yeah. 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 And uh, he also said uh, his, his compulsion to build, it was Jim Baker's um, appetite for construction projects that really brought him down because that's something, I mean, if you have a well, huge... What brought him down was was he he had sex with somebody, didn't he? he oh, yeah. That was the Jessica Hahn. Jessica Hahn, Jessica. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then she spun that off into a celebrity and became a muse of uh, Sam Kinison's. She st- he started, she got her boobs done and uh, eschewed the church, to use one of our favorite words. And uh, then, I mean, Jessica Hahn became quite a celebrity mainly with the rock and tattoo crowd. Yeah, yeah. But a- anyway, she, she uh, it, that was his downfall, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then Swagger had a similar experience. Um, he was caught in a car with a hooker, and he was playing her to well, that was, her. Well, that was Junior. Pleasure. That was Junior. That was Jimmy Swagger. Oh, uh, ju- I I, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yes, you're right, Jimmy Swagger. You're absolutely yeah. correct. I'm thinking of... Um, of uh, what's his name, the other guy. Uh, there was Jimmy Swagger, and then there was a Falwell, oh. and there was Falwell Jr., and he got caught in something. Yeah, because uh, Jerry Falwell, I never ever trusted. Well, he here, here's did. a story, and you, you may not know the complete story. I think I told it to you, and this is this is absolutely a true story. These guys, the reason for Jim Baker's downfall wasn't that he had sex with this woman. Or, and it wasn't that he, uh, any one of a number of things that they could accuse him of, because he didn't do them, really. He, he mm-hmm. didn't really rob from people. He said, send me your money, I'm going to build this amusement park. They sent him the money, he built the amusement park. Right, there was no malice. I mean, he felt that people were supporting a ministry. Okay, so anyway, uh, what was, uh, the, now where was I going with that? Uh, you were talking uh, about uh, uh, Jerry Falwell. Yeah, oh, yeah. So what happened, the thing that was the downfall for him is he was very smart in the beginning. He saw the value of the satellites. Yep. And he bought a transponder. Mm Mm-hmm. And maybe a couple of them. And that was what he had for his company. And it was, they were his transponders as long as he kept paying for them to be up there. And um, they didn't have them. Mm -hmm. So they had to come to him to get 
satellite time or go to somebody else and get satellite time. They had to go to Paul Well? It, it, no, they had to go to uh, Jimmy. Uh, t- oh, Jim uh, Baker. Jim yeah, because I thought he had the vision on satellite. Mm-hmm. But he did. And yeah. satellite delivery of all his shows. So he had these satellites and he was just going everywhere and doing, he was doing a dozen shows and, uh, you know, had his full broadcast outfit. Meanwhile, Swaggart and Falwell didn't have diddly. You know, yeah, and it pissed them off. They resented it. They teams. wanted those satellites. And so yeah. what this whole thing was over was creating a scenario whereby uh, he, they would um, somehow do over. something to take it over. And what they yeah. did is they got him in trouble, okay? And then when he got in trouble, Falwell went to Baker and said, listen, why don't you just sign over? PTL and the satellites to me for the time yeah. being. Therefore, he they, as a white th- therefore they can't grab that. Okay, mm-hmm. and then when this is all over and you're free and to negotiate and do things like that, we'll we'll give it back to you. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> they they ne- never had any intention of giving it back to him. So they became very vested in Jim Baker's downfall. Oh yes, very. they were. Yeah. Well, they were part of Jim Baker's downfall. Yeah, yeah, I think they helped orchestrate it. And I've never liked Joe, Jerry Falwell. In fact, my, I, you know, you have pressure when you're senior year and junior yeah. year to apply for colleges. And I applied for Oral Roberts University mainly to please my mom. And I think um, Liberty, Liberty University. And uh, there were just too many. The thing that ticked me off, I don't mind rules as long as they're equal uh, across the board. But they had totally different rules for the women than they did for the men. And I like there was a curfew. It was like 10 o'clock on weekdays, but there was none for the men. It's like women, if women are going to get in trouble after 10, who do you think they're going to get in trouble with? But I just thought it was very, it was very anti-woman. Yeah. Yeah. And you had a sense of that even when you were younger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just I didn't want to be a part of that. Right. So. Right. But anyway, so that, that's the Jim Baker, Tammy Faye Baker story. I mean, I o- often felt sorry that he he was uh, not uh, discreet, okay? Yeah. And uh, today, that place, uh, uh, Heritage USA, I think is just a lot of dust and whatever. It's, uh, they showed it recently on a TV thing about what was there, still there. And it was just the shell of the place. It was... Oh, yeah. And it's so sad because you think of the good times that went on there and you think of people's hopes and dreams of any any enterprise that goes south. I mean, I'll pass a, you know, like a smoothie store that went out of business. And I'm just so sad because, you know, people had their hopes and dreams invested in it and they had big, you know, just big plans. Yeah, you pass by a blockbuster. Yeah. (laughs) Like what was the other one? Tower video. Tower, tower. Video. Oh, tower. tower. Tower was mag- just gigantic. Yeah. And it was, was named. It, it was named after the Tower Theater. What happened was mm-hmm. when they were going to build a music store, they bought an old movie theater to put the uh, movie. You know the uh, what do you call it in? Videos. The video store in, mm-hmm. and um, they uh, they said that this was Tower the Tower Theater. Mm-hmm. And so they made it Tower Records. Mm-hmm. It started Perfect. there in Sacramento, and then it went here and there. And I think there were, I don't know, what, uh, hundreds and hundreds of Tower Records all over the country. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were great because they had the access you would have to a chain store, but they weren't a conservative, tight-ass chain store. They had really interesting selections that were pretty like they had european films and they were pretty bold yeah but i remember once uh, telling a person behind the counter listen you're only selling music you're not in it yeah (laughs) you know because yeah i had an attitude about an album i was like you're gonna buy that and i said hey you're not the tastemaker (laughs) here you're just selling records okay yeah so get over your bad self you're you're here to take my money now shut up (laughs) I, yeah, you can tell sometimes. I don't understand why anybody would get condescending who's at the at the counter at the you know cash the cashier. Yeah. I mean, isn't the whole idea for you to come in, buy something, give them your money, yeah. walk out, and come back again? Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Public service. You know. 
So anyway, it's always good to talk to you. I got to tell you, this is uh, this has been the biggest pleasure recently in my life. You know, it is for me as well. So yeah, yeah. So, let's just let's just keep doing it. Okay. Well, I after this is over, we'll set another time to do more of these. And uh, it's just uh, you know, hell, you know, this, this is a show in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, you'll be my like my standing. Well, no, it's like we never we never dropped a stitch. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so kept going. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, that's it. That's Lori Thompson, and we'll see her next week. Bye bye, Lori. Bye. Later. Now, in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I forgot where my button was. It, it, is this it? There is nobody waiting to go on? Yeah, okay, all right. Well, you know, I can uh, I can just call quits, you know. <laughs> and uh, this is something, is there, is there a problem with it going out? Let me see here. Is there a problem with it going out? Uh, well, let me see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Are we? Yeah, no, we're we're going out. So I don't know what the story is, but uh, there's nobody uh, nobody who wants to do the show tonight. I guess this is it. This is the worst it's ever been. Usually, when I when I get off, uh, when I get through with the interview that we run earlier, <coughs> excuse my voice tonight. Um, oh, there, well, here comes Brian Neary. Okay. Um, and, and my voice is um, hoarse tonight because last night I had the, a really bad case of, um, a, what do you call it? Of, um, of, of um, acid reflux. And so it came, at one point it came up, you know, and it hit my vocal cords. And then all day today, I have been hoarse. So please excuse me if, I, if I'm a little on the horse side. Let me see here. Let me uh, get these people to come in here and join me. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, there they are. And uh, there's uh, Brian Neary. Let me, uh, let me bring all this in here. There we go. Well, we lost Brian. Oh, there is, there's Brian Neary. He just, oh, there he is. There he is. Hi, hi, Brian. Hi, Steve Fox. How are you? Doing good. How are yourself? No, uh, I'm doing okay, you know. I mean, outside of this. Do I sound too hoarse? No. Oh, oh okay. I feel hoarse. You, know. you don't look like one. Well, Kevin Stopper just sent me an email, uh, a message. Uh, I'll be in, on in a couple. You know, he's really good about that. He reports him when he can't make it or when he's going to make it or or whatever. So anyway, <clears throat> excuse me if I sound a little on the horse side. So how, how are you guys doing? Tired. You're tired? Tired. I'm trying to get some work done, but... And you started saying you're the, nobody's calling. I had oh, to call. Oh, oh, so you, oh I, so I'm preventing you from doing work. Yeah, so I'll be up like another hour tonight. Can, can we help you with it at all? I mean, yeah. So I'm trying to determine where these errors are coming from. These, never mind. Where, what errors are coming from? Well, I've been I've been in Lodi uh, every day for a big project, and then I have to come home and do my normal work. So. So, how late are you staying up every night? Uh, just like another hour's worth, I guess, after the show. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's not terrible. Not terrible. I've been spending they... the last two days trying to get Amy on. Amy, who? Amy. Oh, you don't know who Amy is because you don't listen to the Jack Bishop show. Uh, the intersection. I, I heard her name and I heard you guys talking about her before a couple times. Yeah. Well, she, uh, it seems as though Jack is uh, in the hospital again. And it's not been good. It's, you know, it's been a little, little touch and go here. Not, 
so far as living is concerned, but he almost lost a leg. Oh, what? Yeah. Before or this time? No, this time. Oh. And uh, <clears throat> so he has been went to the hospital, and they said he's probably not going to be out till till uh, Friday. And then they're suggesting he be put in a, uh, a re not a rest home. Boy, what do they call them? Where are they just where somebody? Senior? Home? Yeah. No, it isn't a senior home. That's for me. Please. <laughs> That's we have, a brand, we have a brand new senior home down the road here. You. If you come over here, you stay there. I'll visit you every day. Will you visit me every day? Every single day. Every single day. You'll have day. to get him room 105. <laughs> I may, <laughs> I may just drive by and honk, but at least you know I'm there. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so um um, so I don't sound hoarse. You kind of do. Kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. So, what happened? I, it, it was uh, last night. I had a horrible case of acid reflux. Oh. I had had some uh, ravioli. With a hot sauce, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, my throat was like oh, I, I felt like I had to kind of barf a little bit or whatever, and then a little bit came up, and it was acid reflux. And you know, Ooh. have you ever had acid reflux? Yeah, close to yeah. it, and where he felt, it almost gets up there, and you're like, oh no, no, and you then it, then it then it burns. Yeah, and and what it did is it burned my vocal cords last night. Oh my gosh! So yeah, but uh, tonight I uh, overtook uh, antacids and things like that, so it wouldn't happen again tonight. But it was not fun. Doesn't sound like it. You know, as as Betty Davis said, "Getting old ain't for sissies." You know, so um, I don't. You know, you know, what I've been doing all day. I went over to my. <laughs> you want to talk about work? You got to do. I went over to my. Uh, 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 Roku channel, mm. and all the pictures were missing. Mm. Apparently, they made some change in their system. So I had to go through every photograph that is on my website, uh, my on my Roku channel, which is not insignificant because they're all like you know icons to click on, like if you want to hear Tim Leary mm. or you want to hear whatever. So. I had to go in and change all of the references and add an S to the HTTP. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, what a pain. Well, well, I wrote the guy who wrote the program, okay? And I said, what, what do I do? Well, you know, you know and he said, uh, uh, add an S to your HTTP and that'll do it. You know, so and that did it on almost everything except a couple other things. I had to hit a new button, say ignore something or whatever. But I figured that one out. So I pretty well. If you go over there, please go over to my. If you have Roku, just put in Gabnet, okay? And it's Gabnet Live, all right? And just go over there and just look at it because I worked hard on it today. <laughs> you know. And then all those S's. Oh, but then as a secondary thing, Amy wants to do Jack's show. Uh. So I figured, yeah, I, I'm sure, why not? You know, uh, go ahead, do Jack's show. I don't care. I, I don't, I don't give Jack. Uh, and um, because you know, I mean, she was once the co-host of the show, and uh, you know, she knows what it's about. Well, but her equipment hasn't done this in the longest time, and we, she oh. tried it last night, and all you heard was Amy. You didn't hear any of the callers. And everybody else was on the show? Hmm? Everybody was on the show, and you only heard Amy? Yeah. Yeah. But why, why, I thought they were, do, they did the show together, right? That, why did she leave? Because, uh, drama. Huh? The drama. Well, there were some people here at uh, Gabnet uh, who uh, figured the show was better with just Jack. Uh, Alan, man, that's not nice. Yeah. Oh. So Oops, anyway. <laughs> no, it wasn't Alan. And it wasn't Alan. It was before Alan. But, Thanks you know, him. she said, hey, I'd like to help. Can I help? And I said, sure, why not? You know, although on Friday, I'm going to see if I can get Josh to do it. Because he, oh yeah, yeah, Josh should be good. Yeah, 
there's Josh is terrific. He's just terrific. But, you know, he has a lot of other things to do with his life, and he, he can't do the show as much as Amy could do it. So she's going to well, try it. So I spent all day trying to get her to fix her her system because I said, I can't have you go on and do a show where only you only, people only hear you talking to people, you know. And uh, finally, she found out what it was, and it was a wire. It was a plug. So she had to go down to, I don't know, Guitar Center or someplace like that in her area <coughs> and uh, get a plug, a new plug, and it works, supposedly. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Hmm. So she'll be on tonight if anybody wants to give her a call. I'm sure you'll be happy to, right, uh, uh, Alan? Alan? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So. So can she do um, uh, Zoom or she's no, going she she's going to do Skype like they do on that show. They, they, we kept Skype on that show because it's easy. Jack knew how to use it. Hmm. All right, and to explain to him another thing like Zoom, which is simple, is not easy. It's not easy at all. So, so uh, we just kept it at, at uh, Skype. Although I was t earlier later t earlier today, I thought about maybe going over to Zoom with her. Uh, but um, she did a Zoom call. Hmm. What? They do Zoom call. What'd you say? I they do Zoom. I'll call. If they do Zoom, you'll call. Oh well, they aren't doing Zoom. You we'll, don't. We'll, we'll you know something. You don't know Skype. how to use Skype. Yeah, I did when you. Yeah. Yeah. When you're you know something. Skype, I when I started working with her on this and trying to use Skype, I forgot it all. <laughs> you know, I forgot how to use Skype. Um, so finally, I, you know, but I, I, I can use Skype. I'm fine with it. Uh, hello, Tom Yamaguchi, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. What's happening? Sounds like we could use some help. <laughs> well, uh, no, we, we had no people when I first went on. And uh, I wondered if we, but now it's, you know, it's getting okay. Uh, because Your voice is sounding a bit better. It's sounding a bit better? Oh, yeah, okay. your voice is sounding. It was sounding really bad when you first came on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, it, uh, the, uh, the acid reflux hits the vocal cords. Yeah. Have you had it uh, ever? Uh, not a long time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I want to—I don't want to get a full case of it because that can cause throat cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I mean, if you have it for you, many, many years, I haven't had it. Are you taking for it? What? What are you taking? I'm for taking it? A faux Nexium that you can get at Costco. Oh, fake Nexium. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and that—that uh, that should work. Yeah, that should work. Uh, well, I've been taking it all along. It usually takes a couple of days. No, I've been taking it for a long time. Oh, okay. It's a part of my regimen. I just go down and buy bottles and bottles of it. It, uh, <laughs> you know, ju just to prevent it. You know, so anyway. Oh, look who just came into the room. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Okay. Bye bye. Isn't that lovely? No, don't. Don't. Please. Don't chase her. Treat your daughter Hi. with great love. Shouldn't he treat? That's right. Why don't you leave Brian and let her sit in? <laughs> oh, I, I tried that before. She's too shy. Now she's talking. Now say hi. Say how are you? Say something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See. Hey, you better ask her a question now. She's actually talking. Brian. Really? Well, how was your how day, you? Adrian? Adrian, how was your day? Good. It was good. Show me your nice teeth. <laughs> oh, oh, the front ones are coming out now too, huh? Right here, sit down. Hey, you know, oh, there a, we go. a couple of more teeth <laughs> missing, and you'll be able to vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> or, or a Ford Alexis. Oh, look at the look on her face when I said Donald Trump. Her father has her trained well. Do yeah. <laughs> you like Donald Trump? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> Good, Adrian. Good, Adrian. Good, Adrian. <laughs> So, uh, uh, what, what grade are you in now, Adrian? Second. Second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you doing? You doing well there? You getting good grades? 
Yeah. Is, is she getting good, good grades, Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, because she went, yeah. Well, they only be, you know, they do like the the one, twos, and threes. They should be at twos right now, but like for reading, she's at threes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so she, she's what do, doing really good. What do you mean she's at threes? Explain that to me. Because they, they do like one, two, and three. So it's like a yeah, rating system, yeah. and then like during the year, they should be at the two that they're learning stuff, and then at the end of the year, they'll be at a three. Yeah. And she, She's already at three on like reading and a couple of items, so she's doing really good. Does she like reading? Does she like reading books and stuff like that already? Adrian? Middle. Middle. Middle, yeah. But like, like, see, I, I had to tell the teacher, because I had to get on the teacher last year, that she comes to home from the library with these books that are so easy for her to read. Yeah. And so I complained to the teacher, and she said, oh yeah, she should be doing chapter books, and this was last year. And then so to, we just had her parent teacher conference last couple of weeks ago. And I told the teacher says, Do you have any questions? I said, Yes, what is she reading? Because she needs to be reading chapter books. And so she says, Yes, I agree. So I, I don't want her to slow down because of the kids in the class, you know, so can't be a library right down there. Run down to the library. Yeah, yeah. They got cool stuff at the library, Adrian. You got a yeah. good library right there. Adrian, too. everything you ever wanted to know is in a book somewhere. Just remember that. <laughs> it's on the computer. It's on the internet, too. It, it, it is on the internet, <laughs> too. Yeah. But no, that's the way I felt about school, is that they could teach me all they wanted to, but if I really wanted to teach myself, there are books, you know, and there are places I can learn it. You know, now, My no, daughter you can't learn tore through books. It. What? What did you, you say, uh, uh, Kevin? I said, my daughter tore through books. She just loved books. Yeah. She still does. Yeah. And, and then she got onto the internet, but now she's in college. She's just starting to go back to books again. You know what? I never liked novels. She she liked anything. I mean, she she read books. She'd get done with a book, and she'd rip through another one. She read all seven Harry Potters like three times. It's like, uh, she just, just rip through them. But I mean, I didn't do that. Encyclopedia. I didn't could. do that much reading because there was there were nothing but novels around. But as time went on, there were a lot of biographies and books like that, and those just I just ate those up like crazy. Yeah, you know? and I and I I can't stand reading only because it puts me to sleep. I'll start reading a book, and all of a sudden I'm going, oh, I'll be asleep. Really. I yeah. agree. If I want to go to sleep, I read and I'll pass out. And it'll take me two or three pages. And I, there's a lot of books that I like to read. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, like car books, I'll read car books. And I love those. And I still fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I agree. Huh. I just don't understand why. But well, our brains are just very advanced. Reading is. Yeah, know, that's what it is. That's it. We're advanced. Yeah, that's it. Hey, Alex. Uh, uh, now everybody's coming in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's coming in. Alex, I want to share a book uh, biography that I've just read. Let, I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Okay. He's commercial. He's, he's Alex's good. book club. He, he's he, he Alex's book club. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's better than ailments, I guess. It's better than Oprah's book club. <laughs> Call us Alex's medical room. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know something? I've always been a hypochondriac. Did I ever tell you that? No. You no really? Yeah, tell us about hypochondriac. it. Hypochondriac. And Marjorie the, tells and us the all worst that. thing yeah, I was gonna say Marjorie. The, the <laughs> worst and best thing ever happened to a hypochondriac is the internet. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Every disease I ever I have everything. You know? Yep, and it's related to everything. Because right now I have uh I have esophageal cancer. <clears throat> I'm sure Oh of. yeah. Yeah. And your and your throat is going to dissolve into itself and become part of your stomach and yeah 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 yeah. Well, a good book, a yeah. good biography should uh, cure that. Uh, let me share you a book. Marion Davies. Oh yes. Okay. Oh, yes. This this just came out a year ago. I actually met the the author, um, Laura Gabrielle. Mm -hmm. um, what happened is, she is the um, the daughter of John Fowler, who was uh, the uh, Channel 2 science reporter for many years. Right, right, right. And what happened was I was following when I was on Twitter before it became something else. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so Trevor, I was I was following John Fowler, and then he start she started showing up in the timeline talking about Marion Davies, and it was fascinating. And so when the book came out, I actually, ironically enough, uh, I met her at the um, each year the the Chronicle has a book festival here mm-hmm. in Berkeley. Yeah, and uh, she was at the. Um, at the book festival when I bought the book and she autographed it for me. We had a really nice conversation. It's just a really great book. Marion Mar- Mar- Davies, no. mo- one of the most misunderstood women in the history of movies because she made a big mistake. She fell in love and really was in love with William Randolph Hearst. Mm-hmm. And so she was always thought of because Hearst did, never divorced his wife. Right. And so she was always considered a chippy. She was always considered a gold digger. And nothing could be further from the truth. She he had, saved him. She saved she him. She saved him financially. Yeah, he she, was broke. She, she bailed him out. She, he was uh, dur- right after the Depression. Uh, he didn't have a penny to his name. And he had to save the, the Hearst Corporation. And she went out, you know what she owned here in New York? Columbus Circle. Mm-hmm. She owned the whole thing. And she sold it and gave him about a million and a half dollars. And that saved the Hearst Corporation. He died a long time ago, like in the 60s, right? No, yeah. he died early 50s. Yeah. Like 51, something like that. He died. And- 60s. Oh, 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 uh, Mary Davis. Yes, yeah, she died in 1961. Oh, uh, there's a, a picture of her at the uh, Kennedy inauguration, Jack Kennedy's inauguration. Oh, really? And she died within a few months after, I think, she, within that year. She was a very generous person. She built hospitals. Uh, her generosity was incredible. And yet, She's always thought of. Oh, isn't that the woman who was screwing William Randolph Hearst? Hardly. He was too old. He probably didn't have sex very often with her. But she truly loved the man. She stayed with him all his life. And it wasn't for the money because she saved him. He didn't save her. You know. Another thing, uh, she was actually had a disability. She actually had a stutter. Stutter, yeah. In fact, that was one of the reasons why she was so afraid of, of you know, because she was really big in uh, silent movies. Oh, she, she it was one of the funniest screen comedians of all time. I mean, literally. Uh, there's a, a movie called Show People. If you ever get to see it, it's a silent film. But she is, she's ambrosia. She's really, really funny. Mm-hmm. And then sound came. And you say, well, Sal must have killed her because she had a stutter. But when she'd go on screen and start talking, she didn't stutter. And she was in quite a, few, quite a few films through the mid, uh, through the 30s. And dancing and singing and doing everything else. She was a real talent. And uh, Orson Welles, when he... He wrote some book or something. It was a book, I think, on Marion Davies, and he wrote the preface. And he said, anybody who thinks that the woman in Citizen Kane is supposed to be Marion Davies is wrong and couldn't be more wrong. Yeah. Be- and, and he's quoted the book as well, saying yeah. exactly that. Yeah. yeah. That she but was, it's a great book. I, I, yeah. I strongly recommend it. If you love biographies and you love movies, this is a great book. It's called Marion Davies. It's called Captain of Her Soul. Oh, really? Okay. It's uh, printed by UC Berkeley Press. UC Press. Uh, Captain, Captain of Her of Soul. Her soul. Oh. Uh, the the uh, author is um, Laura Gabrielle. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. it, 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 Marion Davies, fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, there was, a, there was a, a director, I'm trying to remember his name now, who it is rumored Hearst shot and killed. Well, actually, that's that that story's debunked. She tells that story too, uh, and uh, and basically, it, it was it was a rumor. The start had nothing to do with it, but uh, but uh, 
he was like there on the boat and and then they put him on a on a, a train and they took him back but he died but it had nothing to do with with any kind of murder or, or murder plot yeah well so that, what, story, what, that story's in there <laughs> well the story is that uh, they were all went out on a boat mm -hmm. uh, that Hearst had his own boat yeah. And I'm trying to remember the name of the actor. Did you, did you read the name in there? It, uh, the actor. Oh, he was a director. director. He was a director. And uh, I, I think I've got Ince. Ince. Thomas Ince. Thomas Ince. Thomas Ince, yeah. yeah. Uh, he um, died on the boat trip. And the rumor was this. Marion Davies had been having an affair, I believe, with Charlie Chaplin. And um, Charlie Chaplin was on this boat, and supposedly Hearst mistook Ince for Chaplin and shot him dead. That's the story. That's mm -hmm. the yeah, rumor that wouldn't. It was the rumor that wouldn't go away in Hollywood. Yeah, and 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 Ince's uh, widow was was very distraught about about that uh, about that. There's a very good project. movie about this, by the way. Oh, really? called The Cat's Meow, which was directed by Peter Bogdanovich. Hmm. And it starts off and it's saying that some rumors are true, some rumors are false, and some rumors just never go away. <laughs> you know, and, and this was a rumor that persisted in Hollywood for years. And it was claimed that Luella Parsons got her job with Hearst because she was working for him as a second-rate writer or whatever, and uh, she wrote a story that made it look like the whole story wasn't true. And uh, he appreciated that so much he gave her a job for life because she knew the real truth and she died knowing the real truth, whatever that truth was. You know, it, 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 who's, who said, Marion Davies said it wasn't true? Right. Uh, wouldn't she? Or, but or, wouldn't Laura Gabrielle said it wasn't true. The, the, the author really said that the story that the rumor was not true, and she she it's, it's in the whole the whole story is in the book. Well, what happened was they brought Ince back to shore because he had died, and apparently it was some kind of something with his stomach, like maybe a bullet, uh, and uh, he uh, immediately as soon as they got him back to shore, yeah. uh, there wasn't even an autopsy. They cremated him. And no, so, he was alive when he got back to shore. He was. They, they put him on a train. He really? went. On, he took. He he was, They they put him on the train on in Del Mar, north of San Diego. <laughs> yeah, he was alive. Yeah, and he, how did he die? Uh, I think he. Died. I'm trying to remember. It's, it's been like several months since I read the book. Lead poisoning. <laughs> they killed him. <laughs> Alex, did they ever do an autopsy on Jim Morrison? Because they buried him right away too. Did they ever find out what he died from or not? Oh, I know. Oh, actually, I remember. Actually, it's it said that he had he was advised not to drink alcohol, mm -hmm. and he did drink alcohol on the on the um, on the boat and got sick. Uh, they hailed a water taxi, went to San Diego. After which, they caught a train north uh, towards Los Angeles. On the train, Doctor Goodman noticed signs of a heart attack. Oh. They got off the train in Del Mar. Mm -hmm. to consult with doctors, and Ince told him that he had drunk considerable liquor. Dr. Goodman called Nell to tell her what happened. She accompanied Ince Los Angeles doctor down the coast of Del Mar, where the decision was made to transport Ince back to Los Angeles by train. At home, he seemed to be improving until he had a second heart attack um, the following morning. He died at home with Nell and the rest of the family. So he died after actually a heart attack. Well, that puts an end to the rumor. <laughs> Sorry about that. But as I said, I, I strongly recommend the book. You'll, you'll like. And, and just getting back on her stutter, unfortunately, one of the one of the ways she she dealt with it was consuming alcohol, and she became very alcoholic, and uh, and it was really sad um, uh, towards the end of her life. And and I believe she was drinking while Hearst was still alive, and he didn't like her drinking. No. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's 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 a. It, it, somebody once told me if you there are certain people, who are completely misunderstood. 
either because of some kind of notoriety of one sort or another. I mean, you live with William Randolph Hearst for what, 35 years, I think it was? And it's, uh, it's a pretty, uh, um, pretty uh, horrible uh, what, what happened to her in history. Um, another guy who, another person who, whose legacy was terrible was uh, Fatty Arbuckle. Mm, yeah. Um, Fatty Arbuckle was the first sensational trial in this country of a, of a famous personage like that. Up until that time, movie companies hired people to keep their people out of trouble. Okay? They could kill a story. Um, but in the case of Fatty Arbuckle, he, he wasn't, I think, wasn't even at the party when the incident happened where this woman died. Uh, and she was a hooker. And she was out for money. And some woman took her up there and they were going to frame Fatty Arbuckle. And it was a whole, whole thing. But anyway, three trials, two hung juries. And the final trial took them seven minutes to come back with a verdict. And they said, what has been done to this man is one of the most horrible things we can think of. And he deserves a major apology from anyone that ever tried to find him guilty. And uh, that was part of the of the of the verdict of the uh, of the of the uh, jury, and he never really got back full time in the movies. He wound up being a director under the name of William Goodrich, and then he kind of changed it to Will Be Good. <laughs> and um, he's another guy who was completely misunderstood, and you know. So I mean, there are people like that who didn't deserve the legacy they got. You know, and, and uh, 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 Fatty Arbuckle will always be associated with a Coca-Cola bottle. <laughs> uh, and n none of that was true. What happened was she died from some kind of a... She had, she had venereal disease. She was pregnant. All kinds of things. And she died of a, uh, you know, some kind of gazorchnitz down in her down in her womb area, and uh, she died. Uh, and uh, when asked by a Hearst reporter, a doctor said, well, it could happen from the insertion of, say, something like a Coca-Cola bottle. Off it went. And off that rumor went. I grew up as a kid long after Fatty Arbuckle was dead, knowing about Fatty Arbuckle and the Coke bottle. You know, so, I mean, it, it was, it was there's some amazing rumors that continue to persist in Hollywood. And, um, but I, w I wish the rumor were to persist more often on how she saved the Hearst Corporation. That would change the whole image of Marion Davies. I got to find that book. It's called, what again? It's Captain of oh, Her Own Cap Soul? Captain of Her Soul. Captain of Her Soul. Like, Laura Gabrielle. Let me see here. Do I have a piece of paper here? I find a piece of paper. <laughs> captain of her soul. Uh, Just remember, Captain of My Heart. Uh, Wasn't that uh, a song? It comes, from, it comes from a poem. The Captain of Her Heart. Yeah, okay. Captain of Her Soul. Um, you know, I have to write stuff down now or I never remember it any longer. It comes from a poem by William Ernest, Ernest uh, Henley, Invictus. Yeah. And that's on the beginning of the book. Yeah. But she was... I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. You know, if I, if I told you to watch uh, Marion Davies' films, a lot of her silent films, she was funny. It's very funny. But Hearst didn't like her, didn't like her making comedies. He forced her to make these dramas. And she wasn't as good at drama as she was at comedy. It's wonderful at comedy. As I say, if you don't like silent movies, there's one silent movie I think you can watch without any pain, and it's called Show People with Marion Davies. Yeah, it makes me want to see these movies. I have not seen them, unfortunately, but I, I definitely would like to see them. Well, there's a very good version of Show People out that was with the music done by Carl Davis, who does a great job of doing music for these movies. And when you see a silent film projected at the right speed, with the proper um, uh, music, you know, with good music accompanying it, 
they're well worth watching. You've missed a whole, if you like movies, you've missed a whole area of film that, you know, <coughs> went on for 20, 30 years uh, <coughs> that you never saw. I mean, one of the greatest war movies was The Big Parade. A wonderful film. And, of course, the first... What were the, what was what were the first two films to win the Academy Award in nineteen I think twenty seven? No, one of them was Wings. Yeah, but there was another one, and it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. And now I'm. Is that the one you saw out in San Francisco, Alex? No, that no. was Napoleon. Napoleon. That was Napoleon. Okay. Uh, what, what was the film now? I'm, I'm. Oh God, I'm so my mind is just going. 1927. Uh, yeah, well, it was, uh, there was Wings was one of the films. Starred Clara Bow, who, by the way, sexiest woman ever in movies, okay? Uh, and, um, um, Oops, uh, I'll look it up for you. Look, look it up. First film ever to win a game. Techie would know this right off the bat. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Echo, what uh, was King it? of Kings. Alex? What? Jazz singer? This might answer your question. Oh, no, that's not it. Sorry. What with the significant uh, films e of Echo, stop. Stop. Metropolis, Alex? No, not Metropolis. No. no. Uh, Sunrise? Sunrise. I remember yeah. mentioning that, yeah. Yeah. And the director? Oh, I'll tell you in a second. Hold on. I, you know, she's, I remember him mentioning that movie, Sunrise. German. Uh, Ger He's the guy yeah, that did, did uh, Metro. Uh, no, he didn't do Metropolis. He did. Hold uh, on, I'll look it up. I'm gonna go to. Oh, he now. did Nosfer. Uh, did Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, so it's, uh, German director W. F. R. F. Moreau. Uh, uh, no, uh, Murnau. Murnau, that's it. Sorry, yeah. F. W. Murnau. Yep. Yeah, that oh, one. That the, there were two awards given: one for best picture, drama, whatever, and then one for artistic achievement. Best Picture. It was the only time they ever gave away two separate awards at the Academy Awards, and uh, so it uh, wing. Uh, they always mention Wings won the first, yeah, no, but also Sunrise won as well. So yeah, you learn more about silent films than you ever want to know in the last ten minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> but if you don't, if you don't, if you don't watch um, silent films. You've missed a lot of great films. Uh, there was a period of time where I was watching silent films like crazy. Because I said, if I love movies, I've got to go see all these movies that were great. And guess who turned me on to them? Shecky. Shecky. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah he I, was, his knowledge for movies was impeccable. I mean, he Well, no, up like to it. a point. Up to a point. Yeah, I mean, but he knew it. Like, up until oh. about the 19... Uh, yeah, you're right about that. He used to just rattle off the cats to me, and I'm like, yeah. on the way home, be like, how does he know all this? Yeah, like, yeah like a but computer. after 1950, no. Yeah. Do you know, like, he, 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 whatever he, they to did, the day Alex, he died, you know? to the day he died, he never saw Psycho. I, I actually did after he passed away. I finally watched it. I liked it, Alex. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You didn't watch Psycho, did you? After yeah, all I actually watched years? the original. I never actually saw the saw the movie myself, to say the truth. I liked it. You it never crazy. saw Psycho? I swear what my mother's What kind of a movie did. moron are you? Was, who, he here, was, who here hasn't seen Psycho? I really never did. Oh, I even really? told him that. Kevin yeah. never saw it? You know I was going to ask you? You never saw it either? Alex? Seen the parts of the sh you know the shower scene. But he was great. Everywhere. <laughs> the shower scene. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you never saw it. I've never seen it. No. Have you ever had any desire to see it? Probably when it first came out. I, you know, <laughs> he was phenomenal in the movie. I thought Anthony Perkins. I was like, wow, he was yeah. really good. You know what the hook on that movie was? What was it? Yeah, I mean, he the was... hook on that movie was Hitchcock announced no one will be let in to see this movie after the first seven minutes. Oh. Yeah. So it was one of the first movies where people actually went and watched it from the beginning. Uh, in those uh, up till that time, you used to walk in the movie in the middle of it, well. and then you'd wait for the uh, the whole thing, the whole cycle of the cartoons and the newsreels and the companion feature and then this film to come back on and then the, the the constant thing you would say to somebody in a movie theater is is this where we came in yeah this is where we came in yeah yeah 
And films were kind of created that way, you know. Anyway, enough about enough about movies. Although we got twenty minutes left, I could fill it up with movies. Um, the Senate passed the bill. Oh, that's on, a, moving oh. on to the president for six. Uh, oh, is this the kick it down the road bill? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they keep kicking it down the road constantly. You know, the the other day the Republicans like stepped on their weenie like three or four times. <laughs> God, I mean, there, uh, one uh, senator is challenging a witness to to a, to a fight or something Oh, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, that was wonderful. Oh, my God. Yeah, but it was even more Bernie wonderful. Bernie Sanders he, stopped it. Yeah, you, if, you get oh to see, if you get to see the whole thing, oh, Bernie on. becomes quite irate. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. You know, he, he, and he looks at the guy who wants to go. He was a former MMA fighter or something. And he wanted to go. There's this other guy that's the head of the Teamsters Union, I think yes. it was. And he challenged him to a fight. And they were going to do it right there in the Senate chambers. And finally, Bernie Sanders had to put his hand on the guy and say, sit down. He said, and don't act like this. You're a senator. U.S. senator. You're yeah. a U.S. I'll come senator. Over I'll kick your ass. I'll come over and kick your ass. Yeah, the, that's like Doctor Strange love. You know, no fighting in the war room. <laughs> no fighting in the war room. <laughs> in the war room. Yeah. You know that the the cute thing would have been if they got in a fight, and the Teamsters guy lost. The Teamsters come after this guy and beat him to a pulp. Well, in the old that's days, that used to in the old days that used to happen. Right when you make foundations for around. the bridge. Yeah. 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 Oh, look who's coming back in again. <laughs> it's the co-star of our show tonight. America's finest leading lady, might I add. Adrian? You can't talk because Brian... <laughs> There's the phone. Is that, how, is that how you keep her quiet? Is yeah, that... no, they're trying to get friends on there. So, so they, have, they have a messenger kids. So it's kids, that they can, as long as the parents are friends with their the other person then they can be friends and they can send and call each other and also play games with each other so it's sort of good because then i can monitor what she's saying and stuff like that so she's yeah. just trying to have her are you going to get that uh, that uh, wonderful um app where you can have a partner like your son oh. as the <laughs> as, as the uh, uh the um, um speaker of the house had with his son <laughs> And then oh, if either right. of them look at porn, it shows up on the other person's phone and says, you've been watching porn? <laughs> oh, Do they want to share it with each other? or <laughs> how, how stupid this guy yeah. is. I think it was called like the Covenant app, to, app or something like that. It's yeah. something. They said my son and I, his son was like 15. No, his son we, was 18. 18. Oh, 18. But not, not when he watched the porn with the son. He was well, I mean, it, this guy is not going to watch porn. Okay, this guy is about as straight laced as they come. I don't know. Yeah, what the dude said so. Yeah, it should be a the thing that tells you when your husband, when your when the, your father. The other thing he did is he claims that Trump won the election. Well, well what I'm saying is they should have a, yeah. they should have an app that tells when you're reading stuff about Trump. Yeah, I think I said that Trump won the 2020 election, and he's going to rehash that now. And yet, this is the guy that right now. The, the really right-wing Republicans hate because he made a deal with the Democrats to <laughs> kick the can down the road. You're yep. kicking. Huh? They're crazy. They're all kicking something. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, you know, what? Like the only way, this, like the only way this government has historically run itself has been by doing something very simple called getting along with each other. You know, you know the Republicans will probably vote that senator that challenged the other guy to a fight back <laughs> in office because he's just like them, a bully. You know, they, if he says it next time, they say, you know what? If you really want to fight, let's get this going already. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's fighting the, fighting the leader of the Teamsters might get you dead. You might want to be careful. Well, well, uh, this guy is an MMA fighter. 
Yeah, I gotta win in the animation. I don't do anything to win. <laughs> Goodbye to Zia. So. Now I want to know. I want to know. You know, the trouble with the, with Congress, and I've said this in the yeah. last couple of days to somebody. I may have said it here. The trouble with Congress is, it's really lightweight. You know, anybody can be a member of Congress because there's so many people in Congress, and there's so many congressional districts that you can be in Congress without much following. And these guys, like this idiot who was an MMA fighter, because he was an MMA fighter, got elected. Now, he shouldn't well, be in had Congress. Jesse Ventura at one time. Well, Jesse Ventura legitimately was, he was the and governor of, uh, of Minnesota. You know. Right, yeah. And he was quite a political guy. I mean, I knew uh, Jesse. And, mm -hmm. and he uh, came on my show and we discussed politics. I disagreed with him a lot because he's kind of like a... What do you call it? A, 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 libertarian. Not, libertarian. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, li, you're not a libertarian, are you, Tom? No. I don't know, thank God. Okay. Then I can, I I can say vermin. this when I say anybody's. I, 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 I'm vermin. You're vermin? Oh, yes. Vermin. Yeah. Yes. Our uh, president, our former president, referred to people who don't like him as vermin. Really? Is this is any of this going to stop? It's like a giant nightmare. Come on, it's the end of my no. life. Please let me have some peace. Alex, <laughs> what would you like to see happen? Should, should we get rid of term limits? Something has to change because this is not working. Term, he gets in, he'll he'll change that. He'll make no term limits. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, he already has an agenda on all the people he wants to get even with. Kind of like the mafia, Don, huh? <laughs> Well, where they're coming from, though, right? Yeah, we uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't want to cross them. Let me come to Don Trump. <laughs> make you well, I wonder behind. if he came to him and he was a mafia boss, you would call him Don Don Trump. He definitely, had, he definitely wanted to kiss the ring. I think <laughs> it would Don, never be enough. Don Donald. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. movie was on the other night. He was coming in, coming in. He slaps the guy around. Remember, who's supposed to be Sinatra? I think you said. Uh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. Out of the contract, you straighten up. He's beating the shit out of him. Yeah. Oh, like, he's, he's blithering like an idiot. <laughs> I think the most brilliant part of that movie. Here we go back into yeah. movies again. The most brilliant part of acting in that movie was Brando and the Cat. Oh, how he's pet petting the cat. I yeah. got the poster here. Yeah. yeah. And nice. I mean, and the cat is eating it up. He's just eating it up. He was a great actor. You know? Uh, and and it was it was part of the, the thing that made him great. Where, where are you going? Don't, where are you getting me a poster? He's going to go get it. you get the poster. Yeah. But he, the, he it was little pieces of, 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 yeah, so what? Paul and Brando, uh, what? my brother. Right? I thought you would show me the cat or something. No, I just, it's a reproduction when I'm actually signed. Like Brando. You know the best reproduction I ever saw? I'm in Paris. I'm on the left bank. And along the left bank, there were all these kiosks with people selling things. Yeah. And I passed by one of them that's kind of opposite the Louvre. It's on the other side of the Seine from the Louvre. And there was a picture about this size of the Mona Lisa. And on it, they had written, reproduction. Oh. <laughs> we don't tell first, like, really? <laughs> Number 4,000 of 55,326, yeah. right? <laughs> reproduction, no shit. Well, I, I thought I was going to buy the real one for, like, 55 cents, you know? Yeah. You should have just bought it anyways. <laughs> yeah, I should have. Well, you know, I, you know what I did buy. Um, oh, did you? The big thing was, at least a few years ago, were f what I called Folexes. These are phony Rolex watches. Yeah. And they weren't bad, by the way. They had a fairly good mechanism in them. Uh, and I can't remember what major company they used for the mechanisms. And these guys would make up phony Rolexes. They were so good that I actually bought one and I wore it out to dinner one night and somebody said, I really wouldn't wear that out to dinner. Somebody <laughs> might steal it. Yeah. Oh, shit. You know, and I, I went, 
weren't this, people this, getting robbed? They yeah, were getting beat up for yeah, those things. Yeah, yeah. Really? I said, yeah. This is a, I never wore it again in public. <laughs> you know I, you're wrong from I didn't life. want anybody to think I was that a feat to buy and wear yeah, a Rolex. Yeah, I remember Rolex. there was a time when there, people were actually getting beat up in New York for those things, and they'd said, well, they you for less than that, really. This, yeah. this, this yeah. is, wait a minute, let me see if I can get it here. The dumb criminals. This is the, uh, this is the... Uh, what do you got? You got the iWatch? No, well, this is the... I can't turn my you hand. Turn it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't. Yeah. That, is that, that the new Apple Watch out? No, this is the Ultra. This is oh, the Ultra. Right. This is the Rolex of Apple Watches. Oh, no. Now we're going to have to buy that, one. That, oh, that, it's that you wonderful. Can you can charge it. It keeps going for three days. Yeah, you were telling me the charge is really good on it. That'd be so. nice. Yeah. And, it, it, yeah. and it's got a bigger face on it. So you know, little people like me are going blind. It's got a much clearer uh, um, picture. It's really good. It's really terrific. Yeah. Yeah. My brother gave me his old watch. I use it when I walk the dog. I track my miles on it and stuff. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I do the walking. Well, I always yeah. turn that on. And this one, you can turn it on from a button on the side. just turns on the, the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the app that had, says how much you're walking. Yeah, that's what I like do. When I was a kid, you know what I wanted more than anything else was a pedometer. You remember Because uh, I, I used to always wonder how far it was going, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to know how far it was going. I never got bought a pedometer. Never, for some reason, I never came into the convergence with a pedometer. And so I didn't have a pedometer. Uh, it's but, now right but now this is the same thing as a pedometer, only it's better. Yeah, it's really cool. I keep track of every, even keep track of your heart rate and everything, Alex, if something's going wrong. You even... Yeah. Hey, Tom, Tom, you're in San Francisco, right? Berkeley. Oh, Berkeley. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what's going on. We're in San Francisco. <laughs> you like yeah. how clean it is right Actually, now? The Pred what is happened? up in Woodside. He's up well, in Woodside. because Apex, they're, yeah, yeah, they're at Filoli Estate. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm just curious about how clean it is and then what they're going to do. It's clean. When it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They cleaned it up so thing. much that, uh, you know, they went after Governor Newsom. Yeah. So why can't you do this? I mean, and he didn't yeah. have an answer. Do you see where yeah. Newsom was today? Yeah. 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 He was, where was he down south? Was he? No. He was down south. Uh -huh. He was inspecting all the stuff. Was it yesterday or today? No, today he was out there visiting, uh, greeting yeah. the Chinese prime minister. Oh, okay. She, she, they, yesterday he was down south trying to inspect underneath all the freeways that burned up. Just one uh, freeway. <laughs> And they, yeah, they went, ten. went to Filoli yeah, Estate. Ten. They went to Filoli Estate, and you know what Filoli Estate was, right? No. Yeah. It's the beginning of Dallas. Remember the oh, show? Yeah. Dynasty. Dynasty. Remember Dynasty yeah, when they built the house, the big, huge house? Yep. Oh, Filoli. Dynasty. Okay, California. Woodside. Yeah. Yeah, Woodside. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, I like, I like it. Seem, there, it but. seems like she wants to get along with the United States now. He he wants to have some kind of a, you know, business Sick. relationship. So, oh, this, this, wow. yeah, we'll see. Because because China's in bad shape business-wise. And so they need good business partners, and they can't afford to be on the b bad side of the United States. So it looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to come together a little more than it was. I hope so. They were good. They, did they get to Taiwan in the balloon yet? <laughs> yeah, supposedly that was part of what was going to be brought up but they yeah, do they, is they, they make a list of things they're going to talk about and yeah. it's made up months in advance yeah and that was two of the things that were going to be brought up you know and basically but basically she always has the same answer to those kind of questions look don't tell us what to do and we won't tell you what to do basically sure. that's it you know yeah, but I mean, the fentanyl issue right there, they're tracking a lot of that stuff from China. I mean, that's one thing, right? Well, I don't know the fentanyl. Are they the major <coughs> makers of fentanyl? I don't think so. Uh, well, one, one, one week Mexico. it's China, the next week it's Mexico, then it's China, then it's Mexico. It's whatever the flavor of the month is, it seems like. Whoever <clears throat> wants to bitch about who. Well, whoever wants to get even with other people, yeah, you know, and start rumors. Seems. Oh, you know, the big bugaboo now is your kids are getting fentanyl because it's coming <laughs> over the borders. No, it's not. 
You know, it's being shipped in by sea. Either way, it's still getting over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but don't say the Mexicans. These these people are just these people are like coming over, over the border. They're carrying it over. Yeah, they're not carrying it over. Yeah, they're trying to save their lives. That's what they're trying to do. And you, oh, you just oh, you see, all these people are bringing fentanyl. That's there. You go, another myth. So, you know, I'm, I get tired of all this. I'm getting so exhausted. Every day I turn on the TV set and there's something else. You know, I don't know. I don't know what to believe in the Israeli uh, uh, Palestinian situation. Yeah, look what they found in all the closets today. Yeah, guns, yeah. ammo, and, and guess who all found them? Stuff. Guess who found in them? In the hospital. Yeah, the awesome. IDF. The IDF found them. The Israeli yeah. forces found them, and uh, chances are, that was brought in by the Israelis to make it look bad because Hamas said, "Look, we don't keep." We, we're not keeping stuff like that here. Here they are. Last yeah. Saturday, CNN walked through the basement of the hospital, yeah. and there were AK-47s laying on the floor. Yes, but how'd and they the, get there? Uh, uh, probably the bad guys, the Hamas, left them there. Uh, if you want to believe that, but I, I uh, you could also you believe... You could also you believe, want to believe they, the Israelis. That's up to you. Well, I think there's a good chance because Netanyahu's the worst piece of crap around. I I, I wouldn't disagree with you there, but I don't. And I don't think it's beyond him to do know. stuff like that. It, let me put it this way: I don't know. Maybe it is true. Maybe it isn't. But I don't know who to believe anymore. Not in this no, world. Nobody does. We yeah. get the news, and it's not really the news anymore. Right. You know, I mean, and especially in a situation like that, Hamas is going to tell you one thing. Yeah, I mean, the Israelis are going to tell you another. Well, we're not really hearing from Hamas, are we? Uh, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't mm -hmm. seen the, anybody from Hamas. Well, they don't have their spokesman. Yeah, well, get they're, out. they're communicating from Qatar. Yeah, yeah because, right. Well, part of the reason is, do you really think? Uh, that they're going to stick their head out of the out of wherever they are out of one of those tunnels to say, "Hey, we want to issue a press release." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll be here in about an hour. <laughs> but you know, you don't know who to believe. Well, that's like, where really all I can believe you know. are Palestinians who are. You know, when you see a bunch of kids lined up who should be in uh, in uh, uh, incubators. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know that 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 breaks your heart. You so can't you help. get them out of there and then blow the shit out of the rest of them. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> that, that doesn't solve it either. You know, every time every time you starve somebody out or you uh, kill somebody somebody's parent or whatever, you've just converted a Palestinian to Hamas. I mean, Netanyahu's done more to create anti-Semitism around the world right now than any other single human being alive. <clears throat> and I wish he would stop it. Quit calling yep. it the Jewish state. It's, oh. it's, it's, a, it's Israelis, it's a Zionist state, call it what it is. But don't involve me, don't make me a co-conspirator to your, to your actions. I don't like that. You know, and, that, and that's what has always worried me about Little. Israel, and I knew the day would come when the, the chickens would come home to roost and Jews would get blamed for everything, you know? And now uh, I know a lot of Jews who are afraid to go outdoors. I'm lucky I live in Harlem because they don't think any Jews live up here, you know? <laughs> so, oh, hey, I got to play a theme song here. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, this has gone by really fast tonight. It's interesting. Which I love it You're doing. Welcome. Huh? Steve and I say you're welcome. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you to the people who were here early. Steve Fox, whose uh, little radio station you can hear on uh, Gabnet's page. I listen to it all the time. Uh -huh. Where do you listen uh, to it? On my Gabnet page? Yes, and thank you so much. And <laughs> back at you, because it's at my page, too. So. Oh, oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> thank you so much uh, to uh, Adrian for having been with us tonight. And this guy she drags along with her, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Are you going to go over and help uh, Amy now, Alan? Of course you will. Uh, yeah, I'll go over there in about 10 minutes. I've yeah, got to make yeah. a phone call. Tom Yamaguchi, good talking to you, my friend. Come back anytime. You know you're welcome. 
uh, Kevin Stopper and uh, the lovely and attractive Tony. Everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Let me see here. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. All right, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, Amy is taking over for Jack Bishop tonight on the intersection. She'll be here in just a few moments. Uh, I will be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.